So in this session, let's learn what are distributed data stores and we also learn how do we scale databases, okay? So there are two kinds of databases. One is RDBMS and uh, one is NoSQL as you know, right? So let's discuss both uh, from different perspective and how do we scale them? So for the example purpose, let's um, imagine that we have a service uh, like the previous example word to PDF service and we have a server and we have a database, okay? This is in consider for now. This database is in only one server, okay? And the service or the server is only single server. It obviously takes the request and gives out the response. So whenever the user comes in to access your service, uh, he converts over to PDF and he will have the entry added into the DB. So whenever he can actually look up how, so far how many Word to PDF have converted, okay. So these are the features supported in our uh, you know, server setup. So now, on the initial days, it's okay. We are getting about 1,000 requests per month. It's absolutely possible to maintain using only one you know, app server and one DB server, it's fine. So now immediately we started to see about, you know, maybe 1 million requests a month. So how do we scale this? Obviously, our DB queries will become slower, uh, even the write and read will become slower, and obviously our servers and app servers will become slower. So I have already discussed how do we scale that service, right? So now let's discuss how do we, what are the different possibilities of scaling database? So one possible way to scale our service is using master-slave strategy in which you will have multiple instances of the DB, okay? The, it's kind of like you have three different um, database setup in which we will have a master and we will have a couple of slaves. So any right operation we do will actually always happen into the master database that is here. All the writes actually happens to the master. And if any case, if you want to read, our application wants to read any data, it should always happen from the slaves, okay? So the read actually happens from the slave, all the right will happen at the master. But we need to have data, whatever written here, to be replicated to the slave, right? So that actually happens asynchronously to all the slave service. So now, this is kind of scaled because all the writes are handed here, all the reads, so we can add more slaves to keep, you know, reading more because uh, any application usually will have less writes and have more reads. In our application also, the number of conversions will be less, but whenever the user visits, visits we, we want to query all the, you know, so what PDF conversion he had made so far, so we'll have more read queries, so this works. But the problem, if you see here, you know, if the user, um, accesses concurrently, uh, uh, accesses his data concurrently. Say one scenario, he wrote something and if he immediately access that data, he will be reading from here. What if he accesses or if he does the read query even before we sync the data from master to slave? So obviously, whatever we have written to the master will not be there in the slave, so the user won't get it. So he will be like, thinking it as a bug or, you know, inconsistency. I just were, I just said the word inconsistency, right? So this is not actually, is a consistent database. So if you know, there is a um, theorem called CAP theorem. So in which this stands for consistency. Now in this setup, we can't have consistency. So this won't work. Let's see how we can scale our databases to make our application work properly. So the next strategy to um, scale the DB is called as sharding, in which what we do is instead of having master and slave, we'll have kind of all our masters or all, all of the instances have the same responsibility. In this case, we have three instances of database in which we have divided the data into three different segments. Say, for example, we had to find out the sharding key on which we need to shard our data uh, onto the database, right? So that figuring out the sharding key is very important process and that should be done very carefully. Say for the simplicity purpose, if you want to store the user's information, we are going to uh, know, take username as sharding key and any username which starts with A to A between A and I, will actually, uh, the data will be written and retrieved from this instance. Any names which starts between J and S will be saved and retrieved from this instance. And any name similarly between T and Z will be saved and retrieved from this instance. 
So that way we have, we are kind of distributed into three different uh, instances and all the data is kind of distributed, right? Um, so that way we have also scaled the read and write capacity by n times. In this case, the n is three. So we have three instances. So we have scaled the read and write capacity by three times, okay? Now, there are a couple of problems with this setup. Say what if, uh, you know, for some reason, in our typical world, we have most of the names starting with A and I, okay? And less of the names with J and N, between J and S and T, A and Z. In this case, th this kind of creates the, you know, hot spot in which most of the data will be, you know, pushed into this particular instance and retrieved. So this particular instance will have heavier load. That is one instance. And um, the, the problem associated with this problem is also, what do we do? How do we scale now? So we have to further divide this particular instance into two instances, say something like um, A to F and then F to I, or something like that, right? So in that case, we'll have to take down this database and then divide or you know take some kind of dump and then we divide and then switch it back. And this is always like kind of tedious process and we should be always monitoring, um, okay, which instance is like kind of overloaded or, and how do we distribute? This is, this is not actually a proper scaling approach. And the more important problem is, so when we have data distributed across different systems, we will have to have kind of one more layer or you know some kind of intelligence which kinds of joins the data between these instances. So what if, if we want to have a join uh, between um, the data which is present in this instance and this instance? So in that case, kind of the joins require, you know, network call between them, right? So these are kind of difficulties in sharding. Um, so let's take a step back and totally redesign the way we save the data. Um, before that, we need to understand, you know, CAP theorem, which I already mentioned. Uh, but I didn't explain, right? So let's learn what is CAP theorem first because that is very important in the database world. Let's learn about CAP theorem. I'm not going to deep dive into CAP theorem. Instead, I'm, I'll give you a you know, high level introduction to CAP theorem. So C stands for consistency, A stands for availability and P for partition. What is consistency? So consider this is your you know cluster of uh, machines, okay? There is first machine, second machine, and here is the user who is writing and reading the you know, data from the database. So I'm not going to tell you what kind of database it is. So instead, assume it has a cluster and you have two machines in it, and both machines can talk to each other, and when you write it, you either connect it to this machine or this machine, um, either of them, and then you're going to write and read from this um, you know, cluster of uh, data store or uh, database machines. So what is consistency? So consistency means consider you write something and the next time immediately when you read, you should get the same value. If you get a different value or old value before you uh, just wrote some data, so that is called as inconsistent or you know non-consistent kind of system. So consistency means say, for example, uh, you had a you know table in which in a row you had value one and you wrote or update the value to say four and if when you read back the data, you should always get four. If you get the previous value one, that is incons inconsistent. So when, when that can happen, say for example, you have two machines in your you know, system, right? So consider um, they are kind of replicated when, and when you read, you are either reading from here and reading from this machine. So consider in both of the machine, the value was one and one in some row, and you are trying to update that value. So when you write, uh, or update that value to four, you either connect it to this machine or this machine. So I consider you connected to this machine and you update it. So now when you update the four, it should immediately replicate the value that one was updated to four. So before uh, this machine tells this machine that one was updated to four and ch before changing this value for if you try to read that particular value, say for example, you connected to this machine and you read. If you get one instead of four, it is called as inconsistency. So that's about consistency, okay? So now the next property is called as availability. What is availability? Availability means, so there is a cluster and in the cluster you have a couple of machines. For simplicity purpose, I'm going to sh I'm showing only two machines. Say what does availability, availability tells you is, even though this machine goes down, as a whole system, 
you should be still, uh, still you should be able to read and write. And that is what called as availability. Even some machines in your cluster goes down, the system should be available up and running. That is what availability. And what is partition? Partition, just to remember easily, consider in your cluster you have two machines and these two machines are talking to each other. Partition tells you that even though this connection between these two machines is not happening or broken down, your system should be still up and running. Okay, whatever data it is there in these nodes, you are still able to read and write the data. So in reality, you can't have all of these three properties uh, designed into your data store or in your database. You can either have any of these two combination or properties in your data store. So you can either have your data store to be consistent and highly available, or you can have consistent or partition tolerant, or you can have your system behaving high availability and uh, partition tolerance. In that case, you have to give out uh, the consistent property in your data store. To prove that, take, for example, um, so let me um, design my data store in a way that it should be highly available and it should be partition tolerant because these days, uh, any of uh, the big companies, if you take Google, Facebook, or Instagram, or anyone, they all needs to be, you know, 99.999% available, right? So I want my system to be highly available and also partition tolerant because my data store or data centers are distributed across the continents or different regions. Even though if the connection between two data centers in two different regions uh, is not happening, my system, I want my system to be up and running. So um, for me, availability and uh, no, partition tolerance is high importance, okay? So I think I design or I set up my data store in a way that it should be highly available and partition dollar. How do I do that? So for simplicity, I have two machines in my cluster. So I make these two machines always up and running. But for some reason, if this machine or if this machine goes down, I keep this uh, whole of my cluster or the data store up and running with only one machine. So I have configured in that way. And also, even though the connection between these two machines are not happening, I still uh, let this data store uh, up and running. So always the user can read and write. So in this setup, I can't have a consistent uh, or consistency. So to prove that, let's take an example. Now, I want to design my database or data store system or cluster of these machines, right? In this case, Consider I have two machines running. One is master and one is, I'll, I'll mention it as, okay, slave, okay? So I want my system to be, you know, highly available and partition tolerant. So the principle says that you can't have consistency now because you have chosen two properties, availability and partition tolerance. Now your system will be inconsistent. They are how, how, how it is. So to prove that, let's take an example. I have two machines, one is master and one is slave. Now um, I have set up, set up my, my cluster in a way that even if one of the machine is gone down, I can still able to do transaction with this data store. How? Say if this machine is not available, I can still go and read and write from this uh, slave machine. I can write to the slave machine and I can read from the slave machine. My data store is still up and running. Uh, consider this guy is updating, uh, uh, you know, a value here. Consider I have a row in which the value is one. So consider in my master and slave both value is one. Now he's trying to update this value one to say something five. Okay. Now what happens is now this five will be replicated from master to slave immediately. And when he reads back, he gets the data, right? All good. But what if, because I have made my uh, system to be highly, you know, partition tolerant, that means that even though this machine loses the connection between them, my system will be still up and running. I still able to get connected to, to either of this machine and then I can read the data. Now I want to update the value five, from five to say nine, okay? What this guy does is from five, he connects to one of the machine and then he updates from five to nine. Now, the next time when he reads the data, he either connects to here. If he connects to here, he gets the value nine. If 
Unfortunately, if we connect to the slave machine, which never saw the you know recent update from five to nine, then he will receive five. That means that there is an inconsistency in the data which we just written to the system and when we are reading. So um, the thing is, um, he can either connect to this machine or this machine, right? So these machines don't know what are the latest updates. What if this machine, this guy connected to this machine and he updated the previous value of the same row from about, the, it was supposed to be nine, but it is five, but still anyway, he went ahead and then he updated 200. Now this guy will never see that, that particular row was updated 100. So he gets the stale value nine if he connects to this machine and reads the data. So this is the problem because we chose partition so we are sacrificing the consistency. Similarly, you can have different combination. It can be either consistency and partition, P partition and availability and availability and consistency. So the databases will actually give configuration for you to uh, tune in a way that you can make that database behave in either of these combinations, either CP or AP or CA, right? But there are some class of databases which are still trying to give out all the three properties but anyway, they are still prioritizing one of the features um, among these three. For example, MySQL by default is a CA-like system, but you can configure it in such a way that it can behave like a uh, you know, CP system. So in the case of CP, you will uh, give out the availability. In case of CA, you will give out the partition tolerance. But these days, practice shows that we can leave the consistency and we can give more concentration on availability and partition tolerance. You know why? Because this is the era of big data. Say for example, Instagram, it has you know, tons and tons of posts and pictures posted um, you know, every day. Uh, that means like billions or in terms of millions Instagram posts are made, right? So you can't always uh, expect to have consistency there because availability is high importance and also partition tolerance is also importance because we want our Instagram setup to be up and running always, you know, 100% of the time. So it's okay for us to leave the consistency part. Why? Because see, I posted something, it's okay for my friend to not show that particular post for the you know next few seconds, it's fine. Let it be uh, consistent over a period of time. Let it take some time. That's not my problem. Even in the, in the case of you know Facebook posts or Twitter, everywhere it's the same. And let's show the actual data when they refresh the page or when they refresh the tweet. And that's fine. So for us, the very important features are availability and partition. So we sacrifice the consistency part to... Um, and these kind of systems are actually called as eventual consistency or you know weak consistent because they get the consistency of the data slowly because all the nodes or all the machines in our cluster they sync slowly because we have given the partition tolerance as a high you know priority and uh, yeah partition tolerance as high priority and also availability we have given importance right so for availability we will obviously have more number of these machines in our clusters and partition tolerance will have the communication um, between these machines, even though those communication fails, we let this uh, system up and running. So the consistency doesn't really matter, even though it's not about the, just the connection. Even if the machine-to-machine uh, -machine sync takes some time, it's fine. That's when uh, we actually see the eventual consistency because uh, we might write something here by the time it can, you know, syncs to this machine. If we read, we will see the old data, but the, the immediate second, uh, next second, if you refresh our you know, page, we will definitely see the you know, latest value because it just synced the data from one machine to another machine. That's absolutely fine. So uh, unlike in RDBMS, we call ACID compliancy, right? In these kind of systems, actually these kind of systems are called as NoSQL systems. Most of the NoSQL you know, data stores are kind of eventual consistency. Say for example, Cassandra, right? That is actually eventual consistency, but still you can go ahead and change your configuration to make it behave like consistent model, but there involves a lot of latency. That's not, uh, you know, suggested. 
Um, and um, unlike RDBMS, which supports ACID properties, and here we call it as base property, that is BASE, which is called as basically available soft state and eventual consistency. And you know ACID, right? In RDBMS, it's same availability, consistency, and uh, durability. Similarly, in the NoSQL world and these kind of systems where you know AP is kind of uh, more priority, we call it as a basically available and um, soft state and then eventual consistency. And I'm going to explain um, how exactly the NoSQL kind of word works, unlike uh, the RDBMS, just for you to know that how um, the actual distributed data stores work. That's actually the topic of discussion. And let's take Cassandra as example and understand how these distributed data stores actually work. 